You are listening to The Standard Podcast, January 25th, 2018 edition. This week's headlines include Scugog changes dates for operating budget public open house, final budget coming to council. Councillor advises Uxbridge on active transportation plan. Eastern Ontario Warden's Caucus sets priorities for 2018. And in sports, Mojek's comeback effort falls short and lost to Chiefs. Scugog changes dates for operating budget public open house. Final budget coming to council. Dan Kearns, Scugog. The Township of Scugog has altered their 2018 operating budget process schedule. The Township's Operating Budget Open House will now be held on Wednesday, February 21st at 6.30 p.m. at the Scugog Memorial Public Library. The Open House was originally scheduled to take place Wednesday, January 24th. Following the Open House, the final draft of the Operating Budget will be presented to Councillors for approval at a meeting on Monday, March 5th. According to a report shown to Scugog Councillors in June, the original plan was to have the final Operating Budget presented to Councillors on Monday, February 5th. Lori Bowers, the Township's Manager of Communications and Strategic Initiatives, told The Standard in an email, the operating budget process dates were changed due to additional workload increase for staff resulting from Council's requested expense review. However, she added, this timing now better aligns with Durham Region's budget process, which will better inform Scugog's budget. At a meeting on December 18th, following a presentation by Howard Danson on concerns with Ward 3 Councilor Don Kett's expense records made earlier in the month, Council passed a motion made by Mayor Tom Rowett to have the Township's Finance Department compile all of Councillor Kett's expense records from the beginning of his term of Council and provide to the Mayor. In October, Council decided to set a 3.9% tax increase target for the 2018 Municipal Budget. Councillor advises Uxbridge on active transportation plan. Sam Odrowski, Uxbridge. Councillor Dave Barton recently gave a presentation to Council regarding a provincial grant program that can help fund active transportation and cycling projects. Councillor Barton said, I've been encouraging Council to support this idea because it makes financial sense for us. The grant program pays for up to 80% of active transportation or cycling projects and requires the town to budget for it in 2018. On the requested items for consideration list, the active transportation plan was listed as a $20,000 budget item, which if approved, could give the town up to $80,000 in grant money. The budget item was previously dismissed by councillors, but they referred Barton's presentation to an upcoming budget meeting at the end of the month, where they can vote to bring the $20,000 budget item back to the table for reconsideration. Councillor Barton said, We have such limited resources here in Uxbridge, so if we can use someone else's money to do a project we are planning on doing anyway, it makes complete sense to me. Trail improvements, multi-use paths, new sidewalks, and bike lanes can all receive funding from the Active Transportation Plan, if it is approved for 2018. The provincial program recently saw an increase in funding, from $42.5 million to $85 million in 2017, due to an increased interest from municipalities and the quality of their submissions. $3.2 million worth of projects in the Durham region were approved by the province in 2017, but Uxbridge didn't receive any of that money because the town never budgeted or applied for any of the grant money. Councillor Barton stated, We missed out on a huge opportunity already, and I want to make sure we don't do it again. Neighboring municipalities, like Scugog, have adopted the plan, with a total of $115,000 worth of projects budgeted for in 2018. Councillor Barton believes this plan is something that is needed in Uxbridge and will bring great improvements to the town. Some of the things he would like to do with the plan are put bike tracks in downtown Uxbridge, create active transportation pathways between various trails and places, as well as get hard-packed gravel for the new dog park to the Quaker Trail. Moving forward, if the plan does get adopted, Councillor Barton would like to assemble a task force of three to seven people who can dedicate their time towards active transportation in Uxbridge. The initial focus would be on projects that allow school children and their families to safely walk, skateboard, scooter, or bike to school from community centers or sports fields. Councillor Barton said, For me, this is all about people riding their bikes to school, people riding their bikes to soccer games, to avoid people driving cars, which is exactly what this grant is all about. Councillors will vote on whether to bring the budget item back to the table at a budget meeting later this month. 
Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. No, it's the Standard. It's what? It's the Standard newspaper serving Durham Region and the city of Kawartha Lakes. For all your local stories and much more, pick up the Standard today. Call 905-985-6985 or visit www.thestandardnewspaper.ca. Read it today. Eastern Ontario Warden's Caucus set priorities for 2018. Kawartha Lakes Mayor Andy Latham represented the city of Kawartha Lakes at the Eastern Ontario Warden's Caucus, EOWC, annual meeting, last week in Kingston. The caucus elected Warden Robin Jones as the 2018 chair, and Warden Jennifer Murphy as the 2018 vice chair. Robin Jones is the warden of the United Counties of Leeds and Grenville, and the mayor of the village of Westport. Jennifer Murphy is the warden of the county of Renfrew and mayor of the township of Bonashire Valley. The role of the chair and vice chair, elected on an annual basis, is to provide the main point of focus and contact for the caucus and ensure that the established key priorities move forward. I am honored to chair the Eastern Ontario Warden's Caucus in 2018, alongside my colleagues, and to advocate for this year's priorities in support of the 750,000 property taxpayers across rural eastern Ontario, stated Chair Jones, elected as the EOWC's first female chair since its incorporation in 2008. She said, As we are aware, 2018 is a critical year for both the province of Ontario and the municipal sector, with elections scheduled for both levels of government. That being said, the EOWC has restructured its focus and made its priorities very clear and intends to send a loud and clear message to its partners at Queen's Park. Two priorities were established for the caucus in the coming year. Number one, building the EORN cellular and public safety broadband network. The EOWC will continue to support the Eastern Ontario Regional Network, EORN, on its $299 million business case to the provincial and federal governments, which would close the many cellular network gaps, boost mobile broadband services across Eastern Ontario, and increase public safety for residents and first responders during emergencies. Number two, implementing the Eastern Ontario Economic Development Strategy, the EOWC will continue to support the Eastern Ontario Leadership Council, EOLC, in its ongoing implementation of the recommendations outlined in the Regional Economic Development Strategy, the first regional plan of its kind across Ontario. By helping secure financial support from the province, the strategy's implementation would address Eastern Ontario's future economic development needs, including workforce development, technology integration and innovation, and integrated intelligent transportation systems. Mayor Andy Latham noted, the EOWC uses research and facts to influence positive changes across all levels of government. The end goal is to improve service delivery for taxpayers, lessen financial burdens, and encourage growth and opportunities in our region. Not only is a cellular and public safety broadband network project essential for businesses and economic development, it would absolutely increase public safety for our residents and our first responders, such as police, fire, and paramedics during emergencies. The city of Kawartha Lakes is one of 13 member municipalities of the Eastern Ontario Warden's Caucus. Tech, tech, technical foul. North Durham Sports. Mojack's comeback effort falls short and lost to Chiefs. Dan Kearns, Skugog. The Port Perry Mojacks came out of the weekend with a split, defeating the Georgina Ice on Friday, January 19th before dropping a close game to the Lakefield Chiefs on Sunday, January 21st. The Mojack struck first in Friday's game in Georgina. 33 seconds into the game, Austin Mackey scored. Then, less than two minutes in, Graham Lammer scored in his first game back from suspension, giving the Mojacks a 2-0 lead. Less than 30 seconds later, Mitch Gustafson lit the lamp to extend Port Perry's lead to 3-0. Almost four and a half minutes after that, Brady Martin scored a power play goal, the ice got on the board less than nine minutes into the first frame, but Luke Wyatt answered with a goal over a minute after, and poor Perry had a 5-1 lead going into the second period. Almost a minute and a half into that period, Jeff Gauld scored a shorthanded goal. About two and a half minutes later, Lammer scored his second goal of the game, giving the Mojacks a 7-1 lead. The ice scored later in the period, and Port Perry carried a 7-2 lead into the third period. Ben Sharameta was the lone goal scorer in that period, and the Mojacks held on to beat the ice 8-2. The Mojacks then headed to Skugog Arena for a matchup with the Lakefield Chiefs. However, despite a valiant comeback effort, the Mojacks were unable to beat the Chiefs in a heated penalty-filled game on Sunday. Lakefield scored twice in the first period and had a 2-0 lead after 20 minutes of play. 
Then, late in the second period, after Spencer Robinson took an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty, the Chiefs scored again, and had a 3-0 lead heading into the final frame. The Mojacks got some hope in the third period, as less than five minutes in, Brady Martin scored. Then, over 12 and a half minutes in, on a Mojack power play, Derek Risebro fired the puck past goaltender Michael Christie, cutting the Chiefs' lead to 3-2. The Mojacks pressed late in the game, but were unable to get the tying goal, and fell 3-2 to the Chiefs. After the game, Mojack's head coach Tom Boyle said both teams played well. He said, I thought it was a good game by both teams. I thought it was a playoff-type intensity. Both teams were working hard and playing hard, and we fell a little short. I thought we had some good chances in the first period. The puck just didn't bounce our way. Lakefield goaltender Christie was solid in net, and the boys just got playing hard and going at him, and it was a 3-2 hockey game. The Mojacks will be looking to get back into the wing column when they play against the Little Britain Merchants in Little Britain on Saturday, January 27th. Puck drop for that game is 7.30 p.m. Their next game at Scugog Arena is against the North Kawartha Knights on Sunday, January 28th at 2.25 p.m. For more local news, visit www.thestandardnewspaper.ca. The Standard Podcast was produced by Greenstream Studio. Visit www.greenstreamstudio.ca for all your multimedia production needs. Do you have audio production needs? Greenstream Studio is here for you. But don't just take our word for it. Let's listen to these testimonials. Chris is hardworking, trustworthy, and on top of that, he has a great ear for audio. His audio editing and sound design skills are very high quality. He has always conducted himself with very much professionalism. He would be an asset to any organization requiring these expertise and attention to detail. For more information, visit greenstreamstudio.ca.